Husband and wife creative team John and Itumeleng Buloy are bringing a new perspective to photography using old school cameras and film. From social media to big brand campaigns, John is in big demand for his images. The kind which demand the focus and discipline of working with pre-digital equipment. John Baloyi is an internationally recognized photographer known for his incredible images with nature as his backdrop, which he says gives him perfect lines. But today, he dropped me a location next to a highway in a burnt field. And there he is, let's see what he can do. Man, this is really gonna mess up my shoes. <laughs> Wanting his work to exist outside of the internet and rather in people's homes as art, John focuses on portraying people in a relatable way. Hey, John, how are you? Hey, man, how are you? <laughs> Bro, first of all, this location, man. Yeah, I mean, dude, why not? I mean, look at this place. It's really interesting. It's really cool. Um, the burnt grass just adds a cool element to it. And I thought, I mean, mess around with color, it would be dope. And also, what are those, dude? Bro. <laughs> you know, when you said field, I didn't think you meant bird field. <laughs> well, I don't, 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 don't film the shoes like I, it's over. <laughs> I, sh I should have warned you guys. You've also worked with leading brands and have been featured in so many magazines. How has your career flown so fast in such a short space? I started shooting in 2013. That was when I was introduced to Instagram from the guys like I see a different you. I saw those guys and I was really inspired to tell my own story in a visually. And from there on, I decided to quit my own job. I was an auto electrician, like an engineer. I quit that to, to do photography. And from there, it just grew. I got emails from brands to say, hey, we like your style, we want to work with you. And that's what got me here. Most people today are um, used to like using digital cameras and things like that, which is cool, but it just gives you that instant gratification, which sort of loses the moment of everything else. So I just try to preserve like, the actual moment. And what better way than doing it in full? I mean, the look is so vintage. And even you have to like wind the things yeah. and you have to yeah. make sure that everything is so uh, it's so precise. Yeah. Even the the thing is inverted on the inside. The image yeah, yeah, yeah. on the yeah, inside. Yeah. It's almost as if we captured a moment of time. Like we step back into the 1970s. <laughs> wow. His wife Itumeleng is his favorite subject. You know, you're actually one of the inspiration and the backbone behind his great mastery. How has the journey been with you guys? It's been an interesting journey. I mean, we started as creatives because we wanted to tell stories. And we, at some point, found ourselves being distracted by the commercial space, you know, fashion, lifestyle, glitz, glam. But we found our way back, and I'm grateful for that. It's been challenging trying to make that transition into the art space again, but it's been fun. And for our partnership to translate in our art as well, for our chemistry, because our work is also very much about love. Yeah, it's been, it's been amazing. Challenging, but amazing. Bro, I think I've earned my stripes when it comes to reflecting. Um, but may I please have the honor of taking a picture with your gorgeous baby? Sure. There's literally one more shot left in there, so don't mess it up. But yeah, no pressure. <laughs> Talk about no pressure. But can you teach me? All right, cool, yeah. I think the first part is putting it up here, right? Yeah, yeah, just for just safekeeping. Some... Well, yeah. I thought it was for stability. <laughs> no, for safekeeping, so you don't drop my camera. <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. So you pretty much look through there. OK. Um, that's your waist level viewfinder, so yeah. you see her. And then this is your focusing mechanism on, okay. on your left to make sure it's in focus. And you take your shot by pressing this little button right there. All right, mademoiselle, <laughs> I need you to be beautiful. I need you to be flamboyant. Be like a beautiful butterfly, like a flamingo. Hands in the air, one, the left one blocking the sun, saying, no, no, stop, I like it. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right. Oh, That's it. You've taken your shot. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's the work of art. I think I might be invited to France next year. No, I think <laughs> that's my job. <laughs> In a competitive, overwhelmingly digital industry, this artist prospers despite choosing to develop his film at a lab and not being represented by a photographic agency. John, there aren't that many photographers who choose to shoot with film. Yeah. Why do you prefer analog? Well, I got introduced to it through a friend of mine, Andy Lebuka, who actually shot our wedding photos as well. Yeah. So when I saw that process and how he was making photos, it was something I've never seen before. And I always wondered how he did it until I got a film camera for myself and started experimenting. And from there, I fell in love with it because it was just 
a process that made me more intentional as an artist, as a creative, and I felt like it was important for me to, to take my work that more seriously. Would you consider your work fine art? Definitely. I think my work uh, leans more to the fine art side more than the fashion or commercial side because it's literally consumed for, for a very niche market. It's not made for like the masses or anything, but it's definitely on the fine art side of things, yeah. The aim of this approach is to have his images perceived as art and exhibited in galleries. Let's have a look. This is incredible. <laughs> I don't even want to touch it. It's so delicate. <laughs> this is so awesome. And the colors pop so much. It's so rich. I love the contrast. Ah, oh, look at this. Beautiful, Girl, right? Are you ever tired of looking at yourself? No, <laughs> not like this. Not like this. It's romantic. It's beautiful. And this is your shot. Oh, it's a masterpiece. Beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. You know? You know what I'll say? It's abstract. Yes, this so is fine art. This yeah, is fine art. It's right? fine art. It's oh, beautiful. Oh. Oh. You know, since you have a keen eye and you see things with a different perspective, I've got a unique space that I'd like to show you. Oh, really? When John quit his day job to focus on art, their finances were turned upside down. But Itume Leng kept him going. They could relate to someone whose own creative statement was to build this upside-down house near Hartubiaspurt. It's managed by Rene Cronier. It's quite incredible. It's amazing. Hey, Rene, how are you? Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Rene, this place is incredible. Finally, South Africa can brag about our very own upside-down house. Where did the idea come from? So the idea came from a Polish guy, he's from Europe. Um, the first upside down house was built in um, Poland and he brought the idea in, he saw a gap in the market. He searched for this property for about a year and he saw the background, you'll see from the outside there's a nice mountain view and um, yes, so he thought let's do this and this is where it all started. <laughs> it's clear that this is a paradise for photographers to experiment with different angles and styles. Definitely, you know, people come in here, photographers, normal people, the public, they come in here, they take such creative photos, you say, so they're so innovative, they blow us away, you know, I think I know all the angles and then they come with their awesome photos, so yes it is. Building a house this unique must have had its own challenges. Yes, it definitely did have its own challenges, a lot of people think that the house was built the normal way around and then flipped, but it's not the case, the house was built from the roof up. And you know, building a house like this, you have to think the other way around. From the ceilings to the, because the floor is actually the ceiling and the ceiling is actually the floor. And the cornices, you know, everything is to be flipped, you know, the other way around. So it does have its own challenges. Whether he liked it or not, John was about to find a second muse in his viewfinder. I'm going to do a handstand and put my feet up here. Let's see if those yoga lessons and and the <laughs> well, yoga YouTube videos that I was just watching <laughs> work. All right, let's go. Okay, so first things first, the fact that this thing is upside down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Three, two, one. I have not even done this. All right. <laughs> now that I'm the right way around, guys, I can't be doing this by myself. <laughs> what do you think of this location? Uh, I think it's amazing. I'm just a bit out of my element. Like, yeah. all this furniture upside down is really messing my mind up. But it was a really cool experience. I think this is really cool. But I'll just leave it to the Instagram guys. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> Talking about Instagram, um, I think, you know what they say, it doesn't happen unless it's on the gram. All right, do you mind taking us a picture? Yeah, sure, let me take you. Cool, cool, but, cool. But we've got to do some. We've got to make something happen. Oh, all right, cool. All right, we'll come. just do I mean, some fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, just some fun stuff. All right. <laughs> Bye. It's okay for this talented photographer to feel a bit out of his element here. He never wants to be comfortable with his work and prefers the idea of constantly challenging himself, steadily bringing his audience around to see the world as he does.